We are talking about functions again, and we're going to start mapping functions. To map functions, we need to know what the domain and the range are. The domain is the set of first coordinates of the ordered pairs. So when we say the set of first coordinates, it's the first part of an ordered pair. Basically, it's the x values. The range is a set of second coordinates. So the range is the second coordinates. They come second. Basically, it's the y values. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to establish the domain and the range. So the domain is 4, 6, 4, 5, and 5. The range is 6, 7, 3, 19, and 7. Then from there, we're going to reorder. So the first number here is a 4. I'll cross it out as I go. Then a 5, and then a 6. And then I'm going to write it down here on the left, and I'm going to label this domain. These are the x values. And then I'm going to reorder the range. So it goes 6, oh, I mean 3, 6, 7, and then 19, 3, 6, 7, and 19. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to go through each of these set of ordered pairs. So 4 goes to 6. I just circle it once I've drawn the arrow. 6 goes to 7. 4 goes to 3. 5 goes to 19. And 5 also goes to 7. The beauty of the map is that you're able to quickly see if there are two er arrows coming from a number. 4 has two arrows coming from it, and 5 has two arrows coming from it. If you have two arrows coming from a number in the domain or from the x value to the y values, that means that this is not a function. So I'm going to write, no, it's not a function. Because for every x value, there should only be one y value. In this case, for an x value of 4, there are two different y values. For an x value of 5, there are two different y values. So this is not a function. And it's just a way for you to look at it and figure out if the relation is a function or not. So here's another set of ordered pairs. And we need to determine if it's a function or not. So we're going to create our map. First, we're going to establish the domain. So the domain is negative 3, negative 2, 0, 4, and 0. And I think it's a good idea to underline and circle and do all of these things so you don't leave any of the numbers out. When you're dealing with a lot of numbers, it's easy to make a mistake. Now I'm going to reorder the domain. So the smallest number is a negative 3, then a negative 2, then 0, and then 4. And I'm going to copy it down here, negative 3, negative 2, 0, and 4. This is the domain, or the x values. And as always, you can pause the video, try it on your own, and then press play and see if you did it right. It's a good way to practice. Now I'm going to order, reorder the range. So the smallest number here is a 5, then an 8, oh, then a 7, then a 7, then an 8, and then a 22. So 5, 7, 8, 22. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to draw my arrow. So from negative 3, I should have an arrow to 5. From negative 2, I should have an arrow to 8. From 0, I should have an arrow to 7. From 4, an arrow to 22. And from 0, again, an arrow to 5. So since I have two arrows coming from 0, I know that it's not a function. I should only have one arrow coming from each x value. Because for every x value, there should be one and only one y value. So no, that's not a function. 
Example three. This one's a lot of fun, lots of twos and threes. So the domain has a two, then a negative two, another negative two, a three, and a positive two at the end. The range has a negative three, a three, a negative three, a, a negative two, and then finally a three. I'm going to reorder the domain. In the domain we have a negative two, we have a two, and we have a three. So negative two, two, and three. This is the domain. It's the x values. And then the reordering of the range, we have negative three. We have negative two. And we have a three. So negative three, negative two, and then positive three. I draw an arrow from two to negative three, from negative two to three, from negative two to negative three, from three to negative two, and from two to three. And this is another one that is not a function. No, it's not a function because we have two arrows coming from two and two arrows coming from negative two. Example four. In the domain, we have a one, a one, a one, a one, and a one. So when we order that, we get one. In the range, we have more of a variety, zero, five, negative seven, 6.1, and 10. And to reorder that, I put negative seven first, then zero, then five, then 6.1, and then 10. Five, 6.1, 10. So negative seven, zero, five, 6.1, and 10. And then I can start drawing my arrows from one to zero, from one to five, from one to negative seven, from one to 6.1, and from one to 10. And you'll see that this is not a function because for an x value of one, there are one, two, three, four, five different y values, so it's not a function. Example five. The domain is 1.2, negative 3.1, 8.4, and negative 3.1. The range is the y values, so it's four, negative 5.2, 0 and 0. So first I'm going to order the domain. And the smallest number it looks like is negative 3.1. Then we have 1.2 and then 8.4. 1.2 and 8.4. And I write on the left side the domain is my set of x values. The range is my set of y values. And for the range, we're going to start at negative 5.2. Then we're at 0, and then we're at 4. So negative 5.2, 0, and 4. And now it's time for our arrows. We have an arrow from 1.2 to 4. From negative 3.1 to negative 5.2. From 8.4 to 0 and from negative 3.1 to 0. And think about it, is it a function? No, it's not. Think about your reasoning. We have two arrows coming from negative 3.1, so it's not a function. All right, example six. The domain first is 1 half, negative 2 thirds, 4, and 5. The range is negative 1, negative 1, 3 fifths, and 0. The domain will reorder first. We have negative 2 thirds, 
1 half, 4, and 5. I'm going to check that. Negative 2 thirds, 1 half, 4, and 5. So negative 2 thirds, 1 half, 4, and 5. And then we reorder the range. Negative 1, 0, and 3 fifths. Negative 1, 0, 3 fifths. And then we need an arrow from 1 half to negative 1, from negative 2 thirds to negative 1, from 4 to 3 fifths, and from 5 to 0. Now, if you look at the x values, there is only one arrow coming from each. So this is our first function. For every x value, there should be only one y value, and that is the case for this example. And those are all of the examples.